Welcome to YouTube Excel Finance Trick number 17. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link and download the workbook Excel Finance Tricks 1 to 17. Hey, actually in trick 17, we're going to build an amortization table. What is an amortization table? Well, look here, we bought a house and we calculated our monthly payment. $3,042.63. An amortization table just shows you how much of each payment the bank steals from you as interest. Oh, no, no, no. We can't say steal because we signed the contract. But we could say, how much does the bank contractually extract from us? Because when we send in 3,000 bucks, they keep most of it as interest, and they only reduce our loan by a little bit. Now, there's lots of ways to build amortization tables, and there's actually some great built-in templates in Excel, and there's some great functions. I'm going to use just uh, one function, the, the PMT, and then I'm going to show you the math for calculating the interest. Because if you know how the interest is calculated, then you understand why they take so much interest from each payment in the early years. All right, here's our situation. Looks like we have 30 loans, 360. So I need to have my periods along here. I'm going to type, uh, click in cell B20 and type 0, Enter. Actually, let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger. Now I have a zero right here, and then I'm going to click in the cell below, B21, and say equals one cell above plus one. Now that formula I want to be able to copy all the way down, so we're going to learn a cool trick here. I'm going to control enter to put the formula in the cell. I'm going to control C. Notice that the dancing ants are marching around saying, hey, I copied that. Now I know that 380 row is the last row I want this formula. So I'm going to click up in the name box and type B380. Now, the name box allows us to put a cell reference. If I hit enter right now, it would just jump to 380. But if I hold shift, and then hit enter, it will highlight that whole range. So watch, I've copied it, that cell is selected. Now that I hold shift, notice I haven't hit enter up here, I'm holding shift, now I hit enter, and boom, the whole range is highlighted, and then I control V. No way, that is a super fast way to copy uh, a, a formula down to some last row that you know. Now just to check, let's use our keyboard shortcut to jump down to the bottom of the current range. Control down arrow. Sure enough, it worked. There's a 360 there and it's 380 row. Control up arrow jumps up to the top of the current region. Now, the way we do this is in time zero, we just have a balance. So I'm going to say equals and click on my $405,000. Now, the payment is going to be the same each time, so equals, and I'm going to say minus and click on this one right here. I actually have a bunch of different formulas here, but that's the one I'm going to use. Now, I need to lock it, so I'm going to hit my F4 once and twice because I'm copying it down across the row, so it only needs a dollar sign in front of the number. Control Enter, and I'm going to double click and send it down. By the way, the way that double click and send it down trick works is it, it actually looks uh, underneath and if it doesn't see anything then it looks to the left and since there's something to the left here it copied it all the way down if you don't believe it control down arrow to see and sure enough that worked control up arrow to go to the top of the current region now here's the trick to all of this and um, professionals and students alike uh, this is very helpful to know why when you send in three thousand dollars they take so much interest here it is because you have a balance a huge huge balance in the early years. So when you calculate interest, it's equals. Click on the balance, and notice this will be a relative cell reference, one cell up and two cells to the left, times our period rate. And I'm going to click on that cell right there and lock it going down. That formula right there is why in the early years, because you owe so much, they calculate their monthly interest, and that's um, off the current balance. Tab, there it is, 2,784 bucks. You send in that much, and it's you get just about uh, 60 or 70 bucks. Now, there's functions uh, for this and this, but I like to do it with the math because then 
it stresses in your own mind why they're taking so much. Hey, the loan reduction is easy once you have the interest. How much you sent in minus how much they stole from you as interest. Oh, no, no, now, now. It's not really stealing. You signed the contract, but it seems like it. Tab, and then the formula for balances equals the balance one cell above minus the loan amount, uh, the loan reduction that they were so nice to uh, allow us to take off our loan. That will always work all the way down. Those are relative cell references. Now I'm going to highlight all three of these. And I'm going to point to my fill handle. And when I see my angry rabbit, that little cross here, I'm going to double click and send it down. No way. You can send three formulas like that all the way down. Now I'm going to click here, Control down arrow to verify. Now wait a second. All of us that know math know that there's no such thing as a minus 0, 0 is not positive and it's not negative. So what's going on here? Duh, it is mostly what we get tricked by in Excel formatting. So I'm going to actually Control-1, go to the Number tab, and sure enough, you can see its currency. If I increase the decimals, you can see way out here, there's a little fraction of a minus penny. So that wasn't really minus 0. It was minus uh, some little teeny fraction of a penny. I'm going to click Cancel. It's OK for now. But it's important to know that there is no such thing as minus 0. Now I want to uh, Control-Up arrow, and I actually want to add Let's see if I can scoot this in here. I want to have an additional payment column. So I'm going to click right here just to type in a number. And I'm going to type 50K. So on this day right here, we got a huge inheritance, right? And so we were smart. We just paid off our principal. So we're going to have this column. And we want a formula. We want everything to update in here. So I'm going to come over to the Loan Reduction and hit F2. Now here's a little trick. You know, Usually when you make tables, you put the formula at the top and copy it down. But one approach when you are in charge of inventing this and figuring out the logic of how to make a table work, I always go to the line that I ha have some new difference or some problem in. And I make the formula, see if I can get it to work here. And then I copy it down and up. If it works everywhere, then, then I'm good to go. I'm going to hit F2. And since this is loan reduction, every time I get a cell, one, two, three cells to my left that has a number in it, I want to add it. And that'll work just fine, because when we copy this formula down, all the zeros, it will just add 0. Control Enter. And you got to copy it up. It looks like it worked there. And then copy it down. Now, let's look at this aspect of double clicking. When you have something below, when you double click, it actually looks below first and then to the left and right. So now when I double click, the thing that made it stop, if I scroll all the way down, is that there there was a bunch of formulas here, so it just replaced all of them until there was a blank here. Now, we have a problem here. Look at this. We um, Obviously, our balance isn't working here. So we're going to use that same strategy. When you have changed the formulas, you go to the line where it's uh, making some problem. And you can see here there's a minus here. But look right here. This is 5551. So our balance was pretty small. Our next payment was too big. So I'm going to come to this line right here where there's a problem and see if I can think. And you know, sometimes you have to think a while about how to do this. But I'm going to click in the payment. Really, what's the problem is that we, all we needed was uh, this balance plus any extra interest. So I'm going to click in this cell and hit F2. And then I'm going, you know, and I thought about this a few minutes and thought, oh, well, how about an if? If, open parentheses. One cell up and four cells to my left, which is the balance, is greater than or equal to this monthly payment. And I'm actually going to highlight this and copy it. Now, what? and again, it's a lot safer sometimes to come up to the formula bar. Now, if the balance from above is greater than or equal to the monthly payment, then we don't have a problem, comma. And we simply want our uh, monthly payment. but. If that's not true, which means it's less, then we simply want the balance from above times in parentheses 1 plus our period interest rate. And now you got to scroll all the way up, get the period interest rate. And I'm going to have to hit F4. 
That's a cool way to bring the formula back to locked going down. And that formula will work all the way up and down. Again, it's checking to see if the balance is, too, uh, is big enough. If it is, we still run our current payment. But when it gets below, then we have to just take those one last payment. It's that plus any interest. Close parentheses, control enter. Ooh, it looked like it worked there because I got a zero there. I'm going to double click and send it down. And then I'm going to click here and drag it up. And then I'd stop right there. Now, we have a formatting problem down here. It looks like we have a bunch of zeros. We could simply uh, apply accounting and get that to show up as a dash. All right, that is an amortization with an extra additional payment and seeing how to uh, invent formulas on the fly by going to the line where there's a problem and editing. All right, see you next Excel finance trick. There is one more, not just 17, there's an actually 18th one.